Hey guys, welcome back to another All Things Nerd podcast. My name is Nathan, and let's talk about Diablo 4. Diablo 4 is an upcoming action role-playing game developed and published by, of course, Blizzard Entertainment. Uh, it is the fourth main installment in the series of the Diablo series, and the game was announced back on November uh, 1st, at t- uh, 2019, at the BlizzCon 2019 and is scheduled for release on June 6, 2023, this year. Now, the series um, has been a long-running one, of course, over the years. I did not grow up, I'll be honest with you, playing the first and second Diablo. I have played them now, um, being a lot older. My main uh, starting Diablo was Diablo 3, and I think I could speak for that for a lot of people in my generation. Um, You know, I didn't... Back, well, well, let me see. I was born in 1994, so <laughs> I'm 28 years old now, so I didn't grow up uh, with a lot of the Diablo stuff. You know, my parents, as a kid, were not going to let me play a game titled Devil. <laughs> I can tell you that for right now. Now, playing the coming up in Diablo uh, 4, I'm very excited for it. I have played Diablo 3, I have played through Diablo 2 now. I was. I was I liked Diablo 3 I I wasn't a big fan of the cartoony niche of it you know I, I think they kind of went for more of like the World of Warcraft type look with Diablo 3 and I will say that it wasn't a lot of people's favorites either I know they kind of strayed away from Diablo 2 and that kind of aesthetic of more of a dark and mysterious type feel to the game Diablo 3 did not have that and so I'm, I'm excited to see the the roots that they're going back to i think a lot of people are and can speak for that now there already are five playable classes so far that's going to ship with the game they've announced the barbarian the sorceress the druid the rogue and the necromancer and all of which of course have appeared in other series now I'm most excited for the Barbarian and the Druid. You know, Necromancer I know is a big fan base favorite. I never really got into the Necromancer. It just wasn't my class to play. Now, I am very sad because in Diablo 3, I love the Witch Doctor. That was my main. The Witch Doctor was so much fun to play. Uh, I, I, I hope and I pray they bring back the Witch Doctor for Diablo 4. I don't know if they will. Because that seems like it was just an exclusive for Diablo 3. So we'll see if they do bring back the Witch Doctor or not. I think it would be a cool... I think the Witch Doctor could fit very well into Diablo 4. But the thing is, if I remember correctly, they actually replaced the Druid with the Witch Doctor. And that's why, you know, I don't know if you can have the Witch Doctor and the Druid because they're both... I mean, the Druid's more of like a, you know, nature... Um, ne- you know, nature spellcaster, and so is the, the witch doctor, right? He uses like frogs and hex and all that stuff. But I don't know. I'm excited to see what's going to happen. I know that a lot of people's complaints with the series um, so far coming from Diablo Immortal that was just released on the phone about, I think, was it released this past year, right? Yeah, it was released this past year, right? Um, you know, it came with. It came with a battle pass, multiple battle pass so far, and it's come with um, microtransactions. Now, my opinion on microtransactions, I hate them just like everybody else. But I'm not going to sit here and complain about them because there's no point, right? You you know it's a mobile game. You know they're going to have microtransactions. Blizzard has already stated that there will be microtransactions in Diablo 4, but they're going to be more for cosmetics, right? It's just... Nothing to give you an advantage over another player. It's just going to make your character look different, such as like skins and stuff. And that's completely fine. I I think that's great. You know, did I expect that? Yes. You know, am I sad about it? No. I mean, if I want to buy the skins, I'll buy the skins. If I don't, I don't. So I don't know why people complain about that stuff so much. Uh, I did get a chance to play a lot of Diablo Immortal. Um, I raised the Barbarian up in that game as well. It, it was a lot of fun. I did drop off of it pretty quickly because I'm not a big fan of mobile games to begin with. So for me playing uh, Diablo Mortal, it was like, eh, you know, it, it was cool to have a Diablo experience on the phone and be able to play the game at your fingertips. 
But at the same time, I was like, meh, you know, I'll wait till Diablo 4. Now, I will be honest with you, I have pre-purchased Diablo 4 already because it does look really good, and I'm, I'm praying that I get my money's worth here. <laughs> so uh, I guess we'll have to see when Diablo 4 does release, and we'll see how it does. Uh, I know Blizzard has big high hopes. Blizzard has been having a rough couple past years, you know, with all these allegations and the lawsuits and all that. So, but they have had good news where Microsoft is going to be acquiring them. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that deal does go through. I think that will be really good for them. Unless it already has and I'm just out of the loop here. But I think that's still in the works, right? So we'll see. I think that's going to be a huge thing for Blizzard to be acquired by Microsoft because they can funnel a lot of money into World of Warcraft and Diablo and all these games. And I think it would be a really good strategic move for them money-wise, but also developer-wise. You know, Microsoft pushes out good things too. You know, they have uh, Gears of War and Halo and, you know, a lot of their main series games were, were great games. And still, even today, people, when you think of Halo, you think of Microsoft, right? So I'm excited to see where Microsoft's going to take uh, Blizzard and how they can do with their own games. You know, we had the Dragon Isles that just came out for World of Warcraft. You know, that's a whole nother separate video, but though there is still good things coming out of Blizzard, right? And people are saying this has been the best expansion that they've seen for a long time now. Shadowlands was not a big hit. Sadly, it looked like it was going to be, and then it turned out to just be meh. But I've heard some really good stuff on the Dragon Isles, and so we'll we'll see if um, we'll see if Diablo Four hits the mark. I I I think it will, especially you know it, it's it's going to be going up against um, ah what's that other action RPG that's really big right now? I can't think of it off the top of my head because there's the the second game coming out in the series. I'm sure someone can correct me in the video or whoever's listening to this podcast can be like, hey, it was this game. But anyways, uh, you know, they are going to have some competition. I know Riot is working on their own action RPG at the moment based on the League of Legends universe, which I'm super excited about. If you haven't yet, I actually just spoke about League of Legends in a previous video I just did. So please go check that out. I gave my opinions on League and um, kind of where Riot's going. But, you know, anyways, I don't want to go off too much of the trail. I will say this. I'm very excited for this game. I'm hoping that it it does hit all the marks that we've been needing and wanting from a Diablo game. Diablo 3 was great in its own way. It was it was cartoony like I said, but we'll see, you know. Um, I'm I know a lot of people are really having high hopes for this game. So we'll see if Blizzard does the fan base well. I personally think it will. But only time will tell, right? <laughs> and I guess you could say that about any game. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to see, you know, wanted to just talk about it for a minute and give kind of my quick opinions on it. You know, I wanted to hear back from you guys and maybe you can kind of tell me your opinions on what you think about Diablo 4. If you think it's going to be good, if you think it's going to be bad, if you think it's going to be a failure, <laughs> if you think it's just going to be full of microtransactions and the game's going to be unplayable. I guess only time will tell, right? And what's hoping we don't get another Battlefield 2042 is that game was awful. And I heard it's pretty good now. I heard it's stable, but even then, you know, it's you either hit it on the first mark or you don't. And Blizzard really needs to hit it on the first mark because they have not been doing so well these past few years. You know, what happened to the Blizzard we used to know? They used to create such good quality content. And now they've kind of fallen apart. And I kind of talked about that in my League of Legends video with Riot Games. So it seems like all these companies have been around for so long that they think that they can just push out any kind of crap content. And people are going to buy it because, oh, well, you know, it's part of this universe that people have known for so long. But that's not true. And people are smarter than that. And people are starting to understand. I personally think indie studios, indie games, are really shaping the way video games are being made and I love that because we're pulling away from battle passes we're pulling away from you know microtransactions we're pulling away from just money 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 and we're giving people quality good games that's what we need let's get back to that let's get back to when we grew up about um, you know games would come with all the DLC you know you didn't have to pay all these extra fees for them. let's let's um, you know 
So let, let's get back to the roots of gaming. You know, what happened to co-op? You don't see split screen co-op anymore. I know that technology has advanced and everybody has their their own uh, console and you can sit at home and your friend can sit at their home and you can play, but I miss that interaction. You know, I used to play a lot of split screen games with my brother growing up and you don't see that anymore. And we live in this world now where we're not making games dedicated to the fan base. We're making it because we want to make money and that's a big problem with gaming now. And gaming's become more of like the movie industry and not gaming anymore. So, you know, anyways, that rant is for a whole nother podcast. So yeah, I just wanted to uh, quickly share my thoughts on that before. I'm excited for it. I hope you guys are too. And hopefully in June, we're going to get a really good game. So, all right, guys. Well, I will see you on the next video. Thanks.